How's it going, my bakers? Hope you're having a lovely day so far. Welcome back to another episode of the Principles of Baking. In today's video, I'll show you how to use the only preferment that still makes sense to me, Pat Fermenté. So let's go to the kitchen and check it out. I used to be a big fan of preferments. Now I've stopped using them. Instead, I like to use cold fermentation. It removes the extra step of making a preferment and it develops far more flavor than any preferment ever could. A regular yeasted preferment starts its life like this. We take a portion of the total water of the recipe, we take a portion of the total yeast, and a portion of the total flour. Then we mix it all together, cover it up, and leave it to ferment, usually for 10 to 18 hours. As this small piece of dough ferments, it develops flavor over time. And once it's ready, it's mixed with other ingredients to make the final dough. A preferment doesn't only change the flavor of bread, it also changes the texture, and it makes the crust more crispy, which are all great benefits. But having to make this separate preferment is kind of a drawback. That's why I prefer simply fermenting the whole dough for longer. It removes the extra step and you get more flavor out of it. Now pat fermenté, also known as old dough or fermented dough, is kind of different from a regular preferment. See, standard preferment can only be used once. You mix it up, you let it rise, then on the following day you add more flour, more water, yeast and some salt. And once the whole dough is mixed, it's left to rise and then it's baked. The life of the preferment is over. It's single use. Pat Fermenté starts its life very differently. It does not need to be prepared separately. Once you decide that you're going to use it, you pick any bread that you bake regularly and make the preferment from the dough itself. And it must be a bread that you bake at least every two weeks or so. This preferment is usually kept in the fridge, and two weeks is about as much as you want to leave it in there for. After that the gluten can break down too much and it could become a little bit too sour but I'm sure that you bake your favorite bread more often than once every two weeks. What I'm making now is just a basic example recipe. You can use this method for pretty much any dough. Take all your ingredients, mix them together, exactly the same way that you always do when you're making your bread. Once everything's fully mixed, decide how much you're gonna pinch off of this. That will be the preferment. Now I'd usually suggest going with 20% of the total mass of the dough, and that's just to keep things simple. One important thing to note is that when we create the preferment, we take a piece of the main dough. So the first time you make it, the bread that you make will be smaller. But this will only be the case for the first time when you create the pat fermenté. Every subsequent time, we'll simply take the pat fermenté, add it to the whole dough recipe, mix it all up, then pinch it off again, and put it back into the fridge. So we're not going to be removing anything, we'll be simply swapping ingredients. And there you go, this is what we got. The larger piece of dough on the left will be left to rise and then it will be baked. It does not contain a preferment. Now the small piece of dough on the left is the preferment, but it's not ready yet. It needs to be left to rise for 12 hours, 24 hours, 72 hours, 2 weeks, you name it, it's your choice. Don't worry about the timings, use it when you're ready. Simply leave it in the fridge and it will always be ready to go. And that's all there is to creating pat fermenté. All it takes is pinching a piece off of your favorite dough. It requires no attention and no maintenance. The longer you leave it in the fridge, the better it will taste. You may ask why leave it in the fridge. It's because it will continue rising at the same rate as the main dough, because it contains the same ratios of ingredients. I got some numbers for you to help you visualize. Now the beauty of pat fermenté is that you don't really need to calculate anything. I'm just showing you this for reference. See the whole dough recipe contains 250 grams of flour, 3 grams of yeast, 5 grams of salt, 160 grams of water. In baker's percentage terms, that's 100% flour, 1.2% yeast, 2% salt, 64% water. I like my preferment to contain around 20% of the total flour. 20% off of 250 grams, that's 50 grams. And because the preferment is pinched off of the main dough, it contains the same ratios of ingredients, same percentages. Once I know how much flour is in the preferment, or how much flour I want to be in the preferment, I can calculate the rest of the ingredients. And that gives us 50 grams of flour, 0.6 grams of yeast, 1 gram of salt, 32 grams of water, which ended up being around 84 grams in total, and that was around 20% of the total dough, or one-fifth of the total dough that I made earlier. If you're starting off your pat fermenté, that's what I suggest doing, just pinch off 20% of the total dough mass. It will end up containing around 20% of the total flour that way. Then moving on from there, you can adjust the amount. Try pinching off 30% down the line if you want your bread to taste stronger, or reduce it down to 15%. Play around with it. Find the percentage that suits you best. Well, let's check back on our preferment. It's been in the fridge for around 12 hours. And as you can see, it has risen up, it's puffed up pretty nice. And it's ready to be used. Or it could be left in the fridge for another two weeks. 
Now remember, when we created the pre-ferment, we mixed our flour, water, yeast and salt and we took apart from that. Going forward, we'll not be removing any ingredients. Once again, at the top here, we have the full recipe. 250 grams of flour, 3 grams yeast, 5 grams salt, 160 grams of water. On the bottom is our pre-ferment. 50 grams of flour, 0.6 grams of yeast, 1 gram of salt, 32 grams of water. From now, we'll mix everything on the table together in a bowl. Adding the pre-ferment to the whole dough increases its mass. But once the dough is fully mixed, we will remove the pre-ferment, 84 grams, just as we did earlier. So what we're doing is adding the pre-ferment and then removing it straight away. That means that the final bread will keep its shape and size. The only thing that will change is that our bread will taste better, will have a better crust and a nicer crumb. And then of course the pre-ferment goes back in the fridge for any amount of time. And that's how the cycle continues. This can go on indefinitely. As long as you keep refreshing your pre-ferment at least every couple of weeks, it could go on forever. One important thing to note here is the amount of pre-ferment you're going to pinch off from the second time going forward. By weight it's going to be the same of course. That is 84 grams in my case. But percentage wise it's going to be different. Because in the first instance when we created the pre-ferment we pinched off around 20% of the total dough. But of course on the second time we are adding the pre-ferment and then taking it off again. It means that the mass of the dough gets increased before the pre-ferment is removed. So from the second time going forward I'm only pinching off around 15% of the dough. This is of course something you don't have to worry about. Just weigh your pre-ferment on the first time and then continue using the same weight going forward. If you don't want to mess around weighing anything, you can just eyeball it. There is nothing complicated here. It's very forgiving. I'd just like to explain it in detail and give you all the numbers so all the bases are covered. And that is about it when it comes to Pat Fomante. Make your dough tonight, pinch 20% off of it, pop that piece in the fridge. In a few days when you make it again, Add the pre-ferment to the recipe, mix your dough, pinch a piece off, pop it back into the fridge, ready for the next time. Adjust the amount that you pinch off, experiment with it, or experiment with the fermentation times. This is my pet fermenté after 24 hours. You can see that it's still super strong, it's full of gas and it's keeping its shape. Now let's have a look at it after 3 days. Obviously, it has collapsed, but it's still keeping its shape pretty well. This is totally fine to use, there's nothing wrong with it. It will only make my bread taste better. Unless it's completely runny, it's still fine to use. Now if you're going to use this method for an enriched dough containing eggs, butter, sugar, then you might want to be a little bit more careful. I've left such pat fermenté in the fridge for up to 5 days, and I reckon it could go easily up to a week. Any longer than that, do it at your own risk. So I would say when it comes to lean dough, you can extend the fermentation time quite a lot. But when it comes to enriched dough, be a little bit more careful. Now here's what my pat fermenté looks like after 2 weeks. It is still not too bad, it smells nice and sour and it's gonna make the bread taste fantastic. The only issue with such long fermentation is that the gluten breaks down a bit and it will weaken the dough, which is something to keep in mind. You can find all the written notes of this video on my website, link below. So what do you think this method? Have you ever used it? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.